Hey, what's up, guys? We're live at Shoal Headquarters. Well, Art Therapy, Episode 2. I want to welcome everybody. Irene, got your pants ready. Let some people tune in, and we'll get started soon. How you doing, Brandy? What's up, Irene? Hi, Mary. First off, I want to really thank you guys for being here. It means a lot to me. I can't teach right now, so we just have to adapt and make it happen. So, uh, stoked that you're painting with me, and I really appreciate you being here. If you can uh, spare a couple bucks in donation later, it's on in, uh, in the description. So welcome, and uh, we're gonna have a great time. No pressure. You can use any colors you want. So just uh, just have fun. Let your mind go. Let the paint flow, and uh, add your own character and personality to it. Or you can follow along exactly how I'm doing it. So. Uh, welcome. We'll get started soon. Just want to let a couple people tune in. I don't know if you can see the shirt, but got this from Morpheus, the entrepreneur. So it's really weird for me to be talking to an empty room. So uh, I've been thinking a lot lately, and I realized how much we all, you know, rely on human interaction and the importance of all that so um, it's a great substitute it's not uh, personal but um, you know it's an honor that you're painting with me and I really appreciate you being here so let's have fun no pressure all ages all abilities uh, you can keep up with me if you want uh, if you're running behind don't stress just rewind it watch the replay, whatever you're feeling, so uh, the more you watch, the more you learn. If you're painting at the same time, some people learn differently, so just uh, just follow along. We'll make it easy, keep it simple. It's a little math project, we'll make it happen. All right, let's do it. Here's our main tools. Palette knife, in case you don't have all the colors to mix. Half inch angle brush, quarter inch angle brush, Raggedy old fan brush, one inch angle brush, small fan brush if you have it, but either one of these will do. If you're gonna stick to the reggae theme, we'll be working with these colors. <clears throat> we're doing the sky first, so we're starting all in this order. I have neon red, neon orange, neon yellow, and neon green. If you don't have those, it's fine. Um, but you should make two colors of yellow, two shades of red, and two shades of green. So add white to your green or black to your green, depending on which color you have. Same with the red. get started guys uh, as you can see here I have tape on the canvas this is seven and a half inches so you can eyeball it or break out a ruler in about actually seven inches here so got seven inches top of the tape make a mark here make a mark here get out your tape blue tape masking tape scotch tape Whatever you have, but don't use duct tape, it'll peel the uh, gesso. I'm going to be painting above the tape first, starting with red. Okay. 
If, uh, if you're right-handed, you want to have your cup on the right side of the canvas and your napkin on the right side of the canvas. I use a washcloth like this. I fold it in four. As I make a mess, I just keep rotating it to a clean side. If you're really messy, you want to have two or three of these. Two cups of water. I want to keep one clean for sure for the next step. This one will get muddy and we can clean it as we go. If you have the liberty of having three cups of clean water about two inches deep, you're good to go. Here's a sample from the last class just so you guys get a feel for where we're going. Still have a little work to do here, but this is basically our goal. So. Feel free to break out any colors here. You can put some blues in, earth tones, whatever you're feeling. So, as my uh, ex tour manager was telling me the other day, life is whatever color you want to make it. So, just make it feel good for you. No pressure. See what we got going here. Hi, Joni. What's up, guys? All right, nine people. You guys ready to paint? Let's make this happen. All right, we're gonna start off. I'm going to start off with this larger angle brush here on the right, it's one inch. If you have a half inch, try both and see what feels the best for you right here um, as far as applying the paint. Uh, with this particular brush, you can keep it sharp and leave a nice thin line like this. Or you can angle it like this and blend that so I like this brush because I don't have to switch brushes during this process and I can just kind of make the whole sky happen all at once so we're gonna start off with the bright red here uh, if you want you can add a little black to make a little burgundy if your red is lighter than that same thing darken it up a little and then work your way around if you have a red that's kind of off you can add a little bit of white dash of yellow and it'll it'll tone it down a little bit so whatever you're feeling I'm gonna start with the red this is like a dark fire engine red here I'm gonna work above the tape line no rules um, but ideally we just don't want to paint below the tape at this point so try not to get any paint below here we can fix it if need be but I'm gonna start with the red right here on the tape line Just do about a quarter inch to a half an inch solid red. I'm sort of angling the brush and just pulling it. So I'm applying it at this angle and then blending it at this angle. Very light touch with it. Kind of a little finesse game. So if you find yourself holding your breath, Stop for a minute, t step back from your painting, take a look. Don't forget to breathe. We want to relax. We don't want to concentrate too much to where it's taxing to us. So. Now I'm going to go into the black very slightly and pull it over here to the red on the side of the red here. And I'll put a little darkness right on the horizon, right on the tape line. Like that. I'll just blend it out. I'm going to clean the brush, wipe it on the napkin. I'm going to go back into solid red and get a little heavier here. About inch and a half, inch and a quarter. I 
I found the faster you do this, generally the better the results. You're not stopping and overthinking it. You're not trying to overjudge yourself. Our goal now is to quickly put a nice fade on the sky. So we're going to go red to orange to yellow to green to dark green to black. So I'm going to go into the neon red. If you don't have neon red, add a little orange and yellow to your red pile. Lighten it up a tad, maybe even just a touch of white. But very little white so it doesn't go pink. I'm going to add the neon red here. I'm overlap that red and I'm being very liberal with the paint I paint with acrylics um, but try to keep it as thick as possible you know you're supposed to paint skies really soft and muted but I don't follow the rules so just go heavy in the paint here Again, thank you all for being here. I appreciate having you guys. It's a weird situation we're in. We can all help each other out whatever little way we can. So the main thing is just to stay positive and not argue, not be divided, and just, just work our way through this. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, we're creating, listening to music, having fun. Just zone out for a couple hours and yeah, if you guys can post where you're from, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, throw in the city and uh, who's painting with y'all in the comments. So I'm going heavy with the neon red here. Take my time. Normally I'd power through this pretty quick if I was doing a live performance. We're in no rush. This theme is uh, much easier than last a couple weeks ago. I had a little week and a half window where I couldn't be with y'all. So my apologies, but we're all good. So right now I'm applying regular orange. I'm not too hip on names and technicalities. Self-taught so just gotta let it flow. So I put in about an inch of the solid orange. I'm not a huge fan of that color so I go heavy with the neon orange right above it. I'm applying it this way I have the point of my brush to the left and I'm going right. So my comfort zone is left to right. If you're left handed and it's going this way, you want the point on your right side. You apply the paint like this. The more pressure you put, the thicker the line and you want to load the paint like that. So I'm just going to put that neon order on there. Cool trick is to put a little caterpillar, a little line here of neon orange. And the darker colors like this and then blend it out very lightly that's why I like this brush because it's, I'm not switching I can just kind of keep going with the same tool what's up guys how you doing thanks for joining in Yeah. Hope you guys are having a good time. Thanks for posting the city. Looking forward to those pictures. Morpheus. How's it going, bro? I got your entrepreneur shirt on. I don't know if you can see it. Good to see you guys. All right, let's keep going. So I got the neon orange. I'm gonna go into a sun yellow here. You only have one yellow. 
try to make a darker shade, work your way around, add a little orange to your lighter yellow, turn it in this little kind of 60s sun yellow here. Same, same approach here, we're just going to work our way up, and take our time, get used to the brush. If that larger brush isn't working for you, and the bristles don't really give you like a controlled feel, then go to the smaller one. It'll just take more passes and a little more time. So just keep adjusting to your body language. If you're not comfortable in your chair or you're standing and it's not working out and you need to lay the painting flat, do whatever you have to do to feel the most comfortable as far as applying the paint. So right here I can do the same thing. Drop a little line in here. I'm keeping this pretty straight. Then I just blend it out real quick. Touch of light yellow. Then I'm going to clean the brush because I have a little bit of orange left. Touch of light yellow here. I'm going to transition to green soon. Now you guys can do any colors you want. Blue sky. Like once we get to yellow, you can taper to anything really. I'm going to go with green. Now I'm going to start to arch this slightly up, kind of mix it up a little. Original sample that you see here is more straight, but I don't want to copy it, so give this one a little personality. So now I'm going into the neon yellow. Just blending. You don't want any white specks in here, you just want to go pretty heavy with it. My style is a very heavy approach as far as how much paint's on the canvas, but I really like the texture and the feel it gives you. Um, these are UV reactive. So all these little dashes I'm doing will light up. Now if you guys have obvious lines right here, if you have a red line, orange line, yellow line, clean your brush and do the adjacent color and overlap and try to blend those, those lines out as they go up. So I add light to the dark, I add dark to the light, but be a little more careful with the dark color. If you have red on your brush, clean it before you go to yellow. So if you're at that point where there's obvious lines right here and it's looking like a 7-Eleven sign, just try to, try to blend those two with the brush in both colors, adding adjacent colors. And just Blend them out, add a couple dashes here and there. So now I'm going to go to neon green. If you guys only have light green, you can add black to make this dark green, etc. So I'm going to clean my brush. Gonna go pretty heavy in the neon green. This particular color goes on very light. And I just kind of leaf it across, very relaxed. I'm barely touching the brush. Stay calm with it and spread it out. Slight arch here, slight arch. Go pretty heavy with the light paint here.
right, so now I have dark green here. If you guys only have dark green, add a little black. And the key is to move pretty quickly so you can blend these colors on the canvas. Right here is a little too light. You can see the canvas showing through. We'll let it dry for a second and I'll come back in with that true color. Very light touch. I'm gonna go dark green all the way off. And this theme's real nice. It's pretty medium as far as difficulty. And keep it pretty simple. approach the top get a little heavier with it get that solid color get some texture happening Are you guys keeping up? How you doing, Lauren? PJ? What's up, Joe? Jamie, how's it going? Jennifer? Carlinda? Welcome. So we're gonna go all the way off of the green. Like I said, I'm getting kind of chunky up here at the top with the green. I'm gonna use that to add a little black to in a minute. So now we got the background first layer done. I'm gonna go into black, but I'm gonna work my way from top to bottom instead. So the idea here is to go heavy on the black at the top, and then as the paint dissipates on the brush, it's gonna get lighter here and we'll work our way down. So we'll go heavy. Keep going back and forth. And as you notice, I'm not doing this. I'm just left, right. Get a little darker at the top. Work my way down. Now you don't have to do stars. We are going to do stars in a little bit. So the more spacey you want it to be, the darker you want it to be at the top, but don't take out all the green. And if you want to place black like this, little lines, you can use the same brush. Like so. Anytime you work with black, you want to clean the brush pretty good and work it on the napkin and then clean it again and make sure it's dry enough so it's not gonna drip down here on your painting. Now I'm gonna come back in with the green and fill this in. Real light. So, I picked up a little wet paint, so I'll clean it again. I have my water cup sitting in the uh, tape dispenser so it never spills. I've done that many a times. Uh, it's also a great drink holder. Don't put your drink by your water cup or you might ruin some coffee or some beer or some wine. So normally I would have my cup to my right because I'm right handed but I don't want to reach across the whole time we're doing this. So I'm just doing the adjustment here. So now I'm going heavier with the light green. Just kind of 
fill in that glowing white space. I'm going to work my way down now and add a little green and the yellow. Create a little motion. Like I said, this painting is pretty straight and simple, but I love simplicity. Just trying to create a little vibe. Trying to starting to grab on the canvas on this stage, and add a little water to it. But I'm just gonna add some yellows like this, lighten this up a little, have a little light coming up. A little glare here. Just make it your own. I'm going to add neon yellow or light yellow down here. I gotta fix the audio here guys, bear with me. All right, we should be in action now. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me better. I have it going on my live art page as well. Hopefully you guys could hear me earlier. Super low tech over here. I had to jerry rig everything with some blue tape. But uh, I think we're good to go on the microphone now. All right. So I'm adding yellow in here. Just doing a little dash. And then coming back and blending. Okay, guys. Now, if you're at your workspace and you're working with an easel. The best thing to do right now is to make a little spot for you and set the painting flat. Turn it upside down so it's closer to you. Um, if it's already flat, you're good to go. Um, but for this particular stage, you might want to turn it upside down. What I'm going to do is turn the painting upside down. And I'm going to have the luxury of dropping this easel flat. show you guys how to do some stars. So now I have my clean cup of water. Uh, I have a raggedy old fan brush. Um, but you guys can use any fan brush, any bristly brush that's kind of beat down like this. Something like that would be fine. Um, there's a few methods here. 
If you don't have a palette knife, you can load this brush with thin white paint, do a couple practice runs on your palette, and then tap like this, and it will splash white paint organically, create stars. Uh, I particularly like, you can also do this flick method. I don't recommend throwing necessarily, it's not much control. You can do a little flick method like this, uh, but my preferred method is loading the brush and raking down on a fan, I mean on a uh, palette knife. I have this wide one, um, but anything will work. So just be wary when you're doing this, keep this flat because as you're doing this, paint gathers on the palette knife. So if you tip it, you're gonna create a big drip. If you do that, you can dab it, no problem, turn it into a planet or a shooting star, whatever you're feeling, but. So, what I'm doing here is just getting a little white paint. And I'm thinning it out. Getting it pretty runny here. This. So, then I grab the palette knife here, and I'm gonna rake down. The more aggressive you get, the more motion you'll get. So, I'm gonna practice a little here, and I'm gonna drop some on here. The idea is to kind of do a few different pressures so you have all different size stars. And then you can add stars with the end of a small brush as well and do them mechanically. Uh, but I like to do this approach first so they don't look placed. and you get a lot of different sizes. It doesn't look man-made. Let me raise this back up for you guys. What's up Brad? Ashley, how's it going? Alright, looks like it's in focus. Alright, so you can see the stars on the bottom. It's a little far away from the camera, but they're a little bigger than they appear. And I can add add them mechanically. We want to keep this flat for a little bit. I'm just showing you guys here, but we want to keep it flat for a few minutes. My stars aren't running, but if you if your paint was a little wet, we don't want them running, so keep this flat. I'll be right back, guys. Have the luxury of a hair dryer if you have one. Speeds up the process for sure. Our next uh, step, I'm going to drop a little 
sun or moon or whatever you want it to be. And I'm using a quarter. So you can either place the quarter on the canvas, nickel, whatever you have, small circle. You can go big, small, medium. I particularly like a quarter size. I put some tape on this. Um, so I'm gonna press it onto the canvas and then pull it up to leave a circle. Um, if you don't want to do the uh, fancy German engineering, just set the quarter, hold it with one finger, and trace it with a pencil. But make sure your paint's dry before you do that step. So in that particular area, it has to be dry. So you're not dragging the pencil through the paint, clumping it up. I'm just going to give this a little love here, get the paint to tighten up. Generally I don't recommend using a hair dryer, but for teaching, in order for us to just keep rolling with it, it's a nice luxury. See, I've got some organic stars going. I had a little water drip right here. I'm gonna fix that. No biggie. I'm just gonna take a little bit of green, black, and just dab it slightly. some stars bugging you you can dab them with a little green and black kind of soften it up all right so we have our sky in here and what I'm gonna do with this quarter is put a little yellow and white paint on here I'll show you guys how that works. Take my smaller angle brush, it's about a quarter inch. I'm gonna chunk up a bunch of yellow. Like I said, if you wanted to set the quarter on there and trace it, you can. Just prefer, you know, it's generally preferred if you lay it flat. Uh, so it doesn't wiggle as you're tracing. Once you get about halfway down, kind of adjust your hand and work your way around and make a little circle. Hey Holly, how's it going? What's up Kristen? Rudy? Welcome. Glad you guys are painting. So cool. It's not in my comfort zone, but I'm learning. This is episode two, so. So as you can see here, I'm adding a good amount of paint on this quarter, yellow and white. I'm just kind of tapping it on there. So, and before I add it, I take my finger and just clean the edges. Wipe that on your napkin. And just pick wherever you want your sun to be. So, the only decision really that matters here is if you want to follow the sample, I have a palm tree right here. So, I put the sun here. If you want the palm tree in the middle, you can pick the right, left, whatever. Whatever you're feeling. I don't recommend dead center necessarily, but a little bit off center. Um, just keep an idea or think about where you might want one tree, two trees. If the tree has some friends, that's cool, but get one palm tree looking good. 
you're feeling confident and you want to do another one later, thumbs up. I like to have three. I usually paint three of everything, but today we're just going to do one. Keep it simple. I'm going to put my sun. It's mainly white and yellow. Add a touch more yellow here. Add some neon. So this will glow. Like I said, I have tape on this. I'm just going to set it here. And I kind of want it on the orange to yellow transition. So I'm going to set the quarter down, push slightly, and pull straight off. So now I have somewhat of a circle. And I have something to go with. Um, so I'm not trying to just freestyle a circle, it's very difficult. Um, and it ends up getting bigger and bigger. So now I'm going to use this paint and kind of slowly round it out. And if you have a teeny tiny brush and you don't have a lot of control with the paint, you can use that. Otherwise, your quarter inch angle brush and use the point of it. So in this case, if this is the only brush you have, I'm using the point right here and just kind of pulling a little paint and then placing it. So I'm using what came off the quarter already. And just dabbing it. And you can add to this later, but we just want to try to get it round, looking cool. And then once it's dry, we can come fix it, add a little white on one side, a little yellow on the other side. Who knows? It might just look perfect. If you've traced it, just fill in with white and yellow first and try to go heavy on the edges and set your angle brush in so you can cover up that pencil line. You might be, once it dries, you might see that pencil line and you can do another coat. But wait till it dries. Don't fight with it right now. So, basic sunset to space happening right now. Star is here. I'm just going to put a couple man weight ones here. I'm using a small handled brush and I'm just going straight into white. I'm going to pick a couple spots here. We'll go a little heavier. And don't be afraid to put two real close together. It doesn't look cool. If you have everything two inches apart and then eventually you end up with a grid. So I like to go a little heavier at the top. A little bigger. Kind of coming up gives you that illusion of coming up and over. Tap the brush. Kind of make a few more predominant ones. You want to put a shooting star in you can start with a dot pull it out and make a tail if you want a, if you want a uh, shining star go pretty heavy like that and then I use the small small angle brush like this I use the paint that's already on the canvas and pull up. And make a little shining star. Very light touch. Now if you use all the paint here, you can dot your brush again and then come back and re-dot this. 
give it a little texture. Doesn't have to be straight, angle, brighter, but it's the start of it. I'll probably put some soft white behind it to make it look like it's glowing. If you guys want to put in a shooting star, same idea. Drop a dot. Angle brush. Start using the paint that's already there. Very lightly leaf it off. And I'm gonna use a point to make this a little bit of a teardrop. And just remember every time you're doing something, you can always come back and work on it. Don't seek perfection at every step. You'll drive yourself crazy. So, just a couple samples. A little action happening. If you don't like your sky right now, you can work on it a little bit. We're going to move to the mountains right now. Um, just make sure your stars are dry. If you want to add yellow or green or red anywhere, um, make sure that your stars are dry to touch. So, you're not blending that white and smearing the paint. Uh, for this step, I particularly like the half inch angle brush for the mountains. Now, I'm gonna put mountains here above the tape. I'm gonna pull into the tape. Um, the sample I have, I've got a small mountain here, a couple in the distance in the middle, one coming out from the left. If you want to do a big one here, have a little cove here, big one here that tapers out, islands across, islands just in the middle, whatever you're feeling, just go with it. So at this particular stage, I start with a dark green and I just kind of imagine a mountain range. I'm dropping in paint angle just pushing it around. I just want to get the outline, I want to get the placement of the mountain. What's up Savannah, what's up bud? How you doing Lauren? Thanks for joining in. So this is kind of like a diamond head kind of Hawaii thing. If you're feeling more Indonesia style, you're gonna have some real steep, tall, undulating cliffs. California is more flat and mellow. Baja is kind of a deserty. So feeling kind of Hawaiian style right now. So we're going with the going with a little diamond head kind of feel right here. Of course, diamond head goes the other way, but same shape, similar shape. I'm gonna put a couple islands way out in the distance here, a little smaller. And remember, pull down on the tape, keep an eye on the top of your line of your tape. And then as you work those islands down, taper them off ever so slightly on the tape. Keep an eye on this tape line right here. Right here. I like this tape method, it takes the pressure off of having a perfect hand. We can do a Bob Ross style where we're pulling mountains right now. Uh, problem with that is if you're not used to it, you end up bringing your mountain mountain down too far, too far, and then you run out of space. So we've got a nice horizon line here. I've got these two small islands that I'm working on in the middle. And I added a touch of light green, I'm just kind of, so we're gonna get to it, but the highlights on this mountain and this mountain are gonna be on the left. Sun's here, sun, moon, whatever you feel, okay? A mountain over here is gonna have the highlight on the right side. So let's do something a little more. A little more bold here. One big one here. Dark green, touch of light green. I'm adding a little neon so these will have kind of a subtle glow to them. 
I'll break out the light later so you guys can check it out. I have another class coming up on Monday on my birthday, so join in. It's a reggae planet. I hope you guys, it's a little more difficult than this, a few more steps, but what better thing to do to paint on my birthday? Normally I'd be painting live or teaching a class, so let's just make it happen, join in, and uh, we'll have fun. If you look on my wall, you'll see the event page. Very similar colors to today. Uh, but it's a uh, planet space theme with pine trees. So this mountain I'm grabbing light green, you can even grab a little yellow. And I'm setting the brush, the angle brush like this and just pulling down to the tape. Very lightly. Don't worry what you get on the tape. The key is to have the flow so it looks like you're not forcing the paint here on the on this side. So I put the light side of the mountain here, the sun's here. This one, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna set the brush and pull down this way. Because the light is on this side of these guys. Okay. Same with over here. Neon green, neon yellow, or light yellow, light green. Pull down. Now you'll see Bob Ross doing this with a palette knife on bigger mountains and even little smaller ones. He generally paints on a 20, 28 or a larger. Um, palette knife's great, but it's a, it's a learned skill. It's an extremely light touch and very hard to teach. It's more of a practice thing. So. I prefer when I'm teaching to use this angle brush and sort of mirror what an angled palette brush would be. I'm creating a little ridge here, this. Then I'm going to go opposite here with a little darker color. If you want to leave your mountains just black and silhouetted, that's fine. We create our own world here. So, go with it. If you have an idea that pops in your head, just put it out there. Bear with me for uh, everyone who's already painted or has painted before. I'm really going through every little step just in case we have some children or adults out there that. This is their first shot at it. I'm gonna break it all down. Keep it simple. All right. I think it'll look pretty good. Get a touch of yellow right here. I'm gonna take a little dark green and a touch of black here and go this way on the ridge. Create the dark side here. Angle brush here. A little darker here. If you have a little red showing through here, it's actually kind of cool. You don't want a lot, uh, but it's kind of cool because it'll add like a subtle reflection of the sky color, like when you're on the beach and the sun's setting and the sand's real orange. All right. So I'll probably work on this later, work on this later. But like I said, you don't want to overwork a section. You can come back and do whatever you want. I might add some yellow in here, a little green. Uh, but so far we've got the background done. So don't kill the tape until you're happy with what the mountains look like. I'm not gonna overjudge myself. Uh, once again, you can always come back 
and work on the mountains too. So I think this is a good base to start with. And I'm gonna peel the tape. So just fold this to itself, get it out of your way so it doesn't stick on anything or you're tracking paint around. I have the camera facing regular, so I'm actually right-handed and not mirror imaged here, so I apologize that I can't interact and see all your comments at the same time, but I really appreciate you being here. All right, what's up, bud? Jessica, Claude, how's it going? Shauna, welcome. So we're about a little under halfway there, but we got the top done. The top itself is a, is a cool painting, so if you imagine the bottom of that as your canvas, that's a fun little painting too. Hopefully you guys can see everything okay and you can hear me. I had a little microphone issue on my personal page, but hopefully it's fixed. And I'm also streaming with a different camera on my live art page if you're having issues here. All right. So, normally you just take a break, take a breather, chill out for a minute. Uh, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer because we're gonna cheat and we're gonna put tape across the top so we don't have a bunch of pressure right here as far as keeping that straight line. That straight line's real nice. It's gonna set some depth here. What we did here, we went dark to light. That's gonna create distance. And here we're gonna go use green and use the reflection here, but stick with dark on the horizons to create depth that way. We hit the dryer, excuse the sound for a minute. I go real thick with the paint. You guys can go soft if you have watercolor. Um, but I like, I particularly like the mountains and the sun to be real chunky. It's just my style. I don't follow the rules of the soft sky and the muted sky. I'm going for inner face color. I'm just drying this. If your tape is about an inch wide or two inches wide, try this bottom part first. That's the most crucial. We're not going to work here right now. So just work on this bottom few inches here. Get it dry. If you're running behind, you can rewind it like the replay. If you're caught up with me, it's just crucial that this part's dry. If you don't have a hair dryer, Give it five or ten minutes before you move on, and you can just watch me work on this. And you've already visually figured out what you're going to do next. So, my tape's about this wide, so I'm going to go up that far. And I'm going to be taping from here and working on the bottom side of the tape line. So we don't want this tape to pull our fresh paint here, so I'm giving it a real good dry here. If you didn't tune in earlier, please drop your city where you're painting, where you're watching from. It's an honor to have you guys here. It's really weird to be talking to myself in my home studio instead of teaching a group class at a pub or a brewery or a school. So I have to adapt and just uh, make it happen. So we can still do what we love, but got to change with the times. So I like to touch it. Make sure you're not getting any tackiness, it's not coming up. You don't have to get super sticky on this part. But we want to take the pressure off the bottom and have fun. We want to sit here gritting our teeth trying to keep a straight line. 
So I'm gonna take some blue tape. I'm gonna set it here, we're gonna paint below the line. And as you can see, I don't know if you can catch it on the camera, but I'm leaving a little bit of this of the mountains and the sh and the uh, horizon line right here. Do not put the tape uh, too far down, and then when you peel it, you'll have a thin white line. It's not ideal. You want to be seeing a little bit of your top part of your painting all the way across. You don't need to press this really heavy. You only need to press on the bottom part. I'm just going to run my finger on the bottom part. It's about a quarter inch. Okay. Wrap this around. Keep it in place. Now, if your cup is a mess, you can switch to the cup, your second cup, and keep going. Or if you need to clean, you can clean it. I'm gonna switch cups so I don't have to run to the sink and leave you guys hanging. I'm gonna go back to my one inch angle brush. If this is too big, like the, the more you paint, the larger brushes you can use. Like Bob Ross uses house brushes and just does a masterpiece in like 30 minutes. This is a one inch. I have control because I've had 20 years of practice, but if you need to go smaller, just keep working your way down. Uh, for this particular stage, hold this one up here. Go a little smaller. Does the same function. These all do the same function. But you're gonna have to work faster here. If you only have a square brush, you can use that here as well. Uh, I recommend three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half. So go pretty big here on the bottom part, just for blending purposes. So as you can see, my napkin's destroyed. So I'm gonna flip it around. Get, it's not clean, but it's not gonna be tracking in real wet paint. Flip it around and work on a clean surface. If it gets destroyed, I'm gonna switch it. So I'm gonna go, sticking to the same palette, I'm gonna go heavy on the light green or neon green or both. A little bit of dark green. I particularly like these artist loft paints, um, but anything works, folklore, Americana. Uh, I like the tube paint, it's a little thicker. I have kind of an oil style, so I could go thick with it. It's important to have yellow on this stage. I particularly like neon yellow. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, if you guys are painting along, um, I recommend just chilling out for a second and watching this and then following along. I'll give you guys time to catch up, but just watch this initial process. So you uh, you have the approach. All right, so I'm gonna go heavy with the neon yellow. It's crucial that you paint fast here. Be confident, really heavy with the paint. Here's my sun, I'm gonna add yellow here. I'm literally just dropping it on not thinking about it, but creating a light line here. Okay, I'm gonna immediately box that in green on both sides. I did not clean the brush, I just went straight to green. Straight to green, boxing it in right here. Okay, got a little dark green right there, it's no big deal. Trust me, move fast on this, heavy on the paint. Okay. Light green. So my sun's to the left, so the color is going to be lighter here than over here because it's not centered. It's not going to be even. We're not trying to match these right now. Okay. So you'll see it'll taper off to dark green right here. Over here it'll taper to black. I want to get the subtle triangle happening. But I'm going to add dark green here. Not even thinking about it, just dropping it on there real heavy on the paint. 
okay? Dark green all the way off over here. Just dump it on. If you're not having, if you're having confidence issues with the color here, start over here and pull it in. Dark green. Okay, taking a little black to my dark green. Touching it a little bit here. And you'll see where we're going here. Now, I'm gonna clean my brush. Clean it thoroughly. Hit it, hit the napkin, but keep it a little bit damp. I'm gonna go heavy back into the neon yellow. Chunky, chunky, chunky. Okay, okay, and we're gonna go heavy with the green. Throw some chunks in there. I'm gonna clean my brush before I do a pass. I'm gonna add a little yellow and I'm gonna just blend this whole thing. So don't worry what happens here. The key is to work fast so this doesn't get tacky. We're just gonna blend this out. This is gonna be our background for our impressionistic style sky. I mean, uh, water, all right? So I got a little yellow on here. I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm not lifting the brush. I'm gonna go back and forth, left to right. I'm going straight. If you guys wanna arch it, that's fine. If you wanna angle it, that's cool. The key here is I'm not doing this. I'm just going back and forth. The paint will gather on your brush and on the edge of your canvas. If you get a big chunk of paint on the edge of your canvas, just pluck it off with your finger or another brush. All right, so light touch blended it. We have a reflection line. If you like the way this turns out right here, go with it. Just let it dry, chill out. We'll come in with the palm tree and the foliage, and you're good to go. But, if you want to add some thickness to the water, I like to add a little texture, a little more motion, a little depth to it. Uh, I'm going to dry this first, and then I'm going to come back in with those same colors and add dashes. So, it starts like this ends up like this. So soft blended here versus this where you have some more you know purposeful stripes. Okay? So I'm gonna leave the tape until I get the water looking the way I like it. So I'm gonna dry this and work on it a little bit. You guys can see that method. Dry the bottom part of here. If anybody is tech savvy, if you wouldn't mind sharing to my uh, private art collective or share it to your friends, share uh, to one of your band groups, music groups, art groups, whatever you're feeling, I really appreciate it. this so as I'm placing the paint I'm not messing with blend up I'm just adding another layer on top of it instead Looking forward to seeing all your paintings. Don't ever judge yourself. Now's a good time to get back from your painting as well. Step back five, ten feet and just take a look at it. Once we peel the tape, we're gonna do that again. Um, but just take a peek at it. 
kind of get an overall look. When you're really close to something, it start, you start to overjudge yourself. So don't obsess on every, every drop of paint and every little line. I'm gonna hit this with the dryer here. I'm not tightening up this bottom part. Sorry, I can't see comments while I'm painting. I, I had to keep it. What's up, Daniel? What's up, Brad? How's it going, bro? Jennifer, welcome. Andrea, welcome. So stoked that you guys are painting with me. Such weird uh, situation we're in, so let's make the best of it. All right. Please send me the pictures of your paintings and what state you're in, what city you're in. If you don't want me to paint it, I won't, but I'd love to see it either way. I mean, if you don't want me to post it, I won't, but uh, I'd love to see what you did. Uh, if you guys want to make it your own and get off these reggae colors, throw a little blue in there. You're feeling pink, do some pink. You never know. See, the painting on the top right there, that pretty much has every color except for green. So you can play around. That particular one has pink clouds. You guys can put some clouds in here. I recommend not getting too dark down in this area. So like if you're gonna put a cloud in, you wanna do it like orangish here, and then dark green here, and then you can add a little black as you work your way across. So we're not gonna fuss with that layer. We're gonna keep it simple. But right now I have this pretty well dry. And I'm gonna come back in with those same colors, yellow, light green, or neon green, dark green, and black, I'm gonna work my way out. So I love this Liquitex neon green. This is my favorite brand of this. The other brands tend to see a, be a little softer, kind of like this color, it's too limey. Same with the neon yellow. This one's about two shades brighter. The neon orange is awesome. This one's really great. Fluorescent orange and you can lighten it up. Uh, they just came out with neon red less than a year ago. Been waiting for that for 20 years. It's called fluorescent pink, but it's neon red. And you can mix this with red as well. Really great color. Let me break out the light for you guys. Just so you kind of see where we're going here. So, got the neon light going. So you can see this, the action in the sky and the water. You can see the paintings in the background, how they light up. Okay. Coming along pretty good. I'll probably fix this little section here, but I want to get the whole thing balanced before I start obsessing on a mountain or a moon or a stripe here or a little star there. Just keep flowing with it, keep going with it, and get the process. Enjoy the process. Hey Michael, what's up Michael Shaw, Michael Julian, what's up? How you doing Kim, Candy? Welcome, what's up Amber? Thanks for joining in, feel free to share it. All right, so I'm leaving the tape. I know it's driving me crazy, you can't see what's happening here, but I wanna work down here and I don't wanna fuss with trying to keep a straight line here, okay? start with this half inch angle brush here I load it flat so the key is to load it flat like this so when the paints on there it stays pretty pretty thin and you can control the line it's a finesse 
game right here. If you like the way your water turned out here, just leave it. Chill out, learn something, and just go with it. If you want to do this later, add a few little highlights. I'm going to line this up here. I'm just going to make a mark here. The center of my sun here. I'm going to eyeball the tape line. I'm going to drop some nice chunky little yellow in here like this. Loading flat. Dropping chunky yellow. Chunky, chunky. We're just overlapping the same colors we just used that we blended out. Okay. Now we have the luxury of paint being somewhat affordable as opposed to the Van Gogh and Monet days where they would Im immediately go to paint and place their impressionism and there'll be canvas showing you through. When I went to the Van Gogh Museum, there's a lot, a lot of off-white sort of khaki canvas showing through the painting. Pretty extraordinary. Um, but we did a nice, this might like a little cheater method for impressionism. Use all the same colors in the background. So we're not sitting here going, oh, the light's right there. I want to block out the white and then it forces you to add color there and you don't want to do that. You want to just, just chill and layer it. So as you can see here, I just did a nice, nice chunky little lines of yellow. Do a little tiny one right here on the horizon. Okay. I'm just going to wipe the brush, not going to clean it. I'm going to go to neon green well, it's called fluorescent green but neon fluorescent when I first started painting back in early 2002-3 I used to also use glow-in-the-dark gel and I would add it in this section on some of the stars and the moon so you've got a three light painting happening. You know, all the whites go lavender and the blue light. And then everyone who bought a painting back then, when they turn off the light in the room, the whole painting glows for about 20 minutes and just kind of fades out. So all the sunsets turn into little moon paintings. Now I'm gonna do the same process with neon green, but on both sides. So my body, just the way it works for me, I go left to right with the point of the brush on the left. I'm going like this boom, boom. Everything's left to right. If you're more comfortable going right to left, make sure the point's this way and you're dropping the paint there. Load the brush flat. So you see the paint on the edge of the brush, but the bristles are still straight. So the harder I press, the bigger bead of paint I'm going to drop. Just going to not overthink it here. Drop some green. Now don't make this whole area green again. Just, just drop some lines in there. Be a subtle difference, but you're getting the true color now because the paint's thicker. I have the hair dryer, so I have the luxury of this section drying a little faster. And now we're gonna create a subtle triangle. So, see how this is slightly larger here? We're going to work our way out subtle triangles to the sun line. Okay, so as we, small lines here, as we work our way out, we're going to get bigger. Like this. Okay. Nice and chunky. Get that true color happening. Don't be afraid to waste paint. It's better than doing too little paint and having to come back and spend an hour trying to do what you initially came up with. Now I have a dark green here. I'm going to add some new. I'm going to add this grass green, sap green, whatever you got. Next to the light green. I'm going to combine these slightly. So these are neon colors. This is going to light up and it's going to slowly fade out. So we have a nice light line when we hit it with the with the neon. If you're not working the neons, 
No stress, but it's the exact same process. I'm gonna draw your eye toward that. Go a little heavier with the green. And the key here is to get a little bit right on the horizon. And start to draw your eye in here. Little line here, little line there. I'm mixing the dark green and a little bit of neon green. Now let's say you want a little wave right here. Make sure you get the color all the way through the light line. It'll give you the illusion of a wave happening. So down here, maybe I want a bigger wave, kind of peeling in. And make sure it goes all the way through that light line because the light will stop where the wave is and then start again after the shadow dissipates. Box this in with green. We're gonna work on this triangle here. You're gonna see, this, see it start to come together here. I'm dropping it left to right here. The dark, darkening up this area. Boxing in the light. Like I said, if you guys like your blend, you don't need to fuss with this. You want to add a little layer and a little more richness. Follow along here and we'll just keep... Getting perfectionist with it. I definitely overanalyze myself constantly. I'll work two hours on a painting and then spend another three hours just trying to finish it. Doesn't look necessarily different, but it just has to feel right to me before I let it out into the universe. So make sure you get a nice dark line on this below the tape line here. Okay. Now as we get more advanced in the classes, these islands, we can start to mirror image them on the water and shadow them, put water over the top of them and create more of a shadow. But today we're keeping it simple. That's why I have the tape there, so. Creating a subtle triangle, okay? And once I start in on the black on the bottom, you'll really see it come to life. Try not to blend these out too much. Just layer lines and start the paint. Let the painting tell you where to put the color. So if you have a big light section, drop a little dark green line on there. If you have a big dark section that's bugging you, drop a light green line on there. So I'm gonna drop some green on here now. This is dry, so now it's gonna go on in its true color. working on that. Okay. Simple fun painting, don't stress about it. If you guys aren't keeping up and things aren't working out, just relax. Watch the technique. Take a break, come back and do it with me later. I'll have this on YouTube probably tomorrow. So you can access it anytime. You can also go to my videos on Facebook. If they don't mess with it, it'll be there, ready to watch. You'll be able to see the comments as well. So. I kind of like to obsess on the water a little bit. Adds a lot of richness. So now, I didn't clean the brush. Dark green, a little bit of black dark on the horizon to this point. If you're more comfortable going this way, do that. I'm going to bring black in here. I'm just going to make some marks here. Coming in from the side of the canvas. Want it small here, larger here. I'm going to box that color in. I'm going left to right. Looks like I'm going both directions, but I'm only dropping paint going left to right. Just tighten up this line here. If for some reason you start to drag your darker colors in here and it's messing up, just keep painting. We'll let it dry and we'll come back with more yellow and green, okay? So 
So same thing here. Do some markers. Smaller here, larger here. Let that paint brush do the work for you. Don't death grip the brush. Don't forget to breathe. Make those bristles work for you. Relax and enjoy it. If you guys have music going at your house, let me know what you're listening to. Let me know where you're at. Encourage the little ones not to abort mission at this point. We're getting close. I know it's a process. But trust me, it'll be worth it. My last event was 12 kids in Oceanside. And uh, I had four-year-old, six-year-old, a couple teens, special needs, all abilities. It was really cool. One of my students, Cameron, has turned into quite the abstract artist. And... Uh, I just love watching him paint because the concentration on his face is just, you could tell that his mind is working in a beneficial way. And it's really cool to see. He's non-verbal, but it allows him to, to really express his feelings and emotions and some of his abstracts that he's done in class and at home since he kind of got inspired have been the coolest thing to see. The four-year-olds tend to show up the adults. So I'm going to come back with a little bit of green. second stage isn't working for you either we'll just dry it and keep layering if it's working just go with it step back from your painting take a look it'll tell you what where the paint should go you'll see uh, obvious things where it's calling for a certain color um, I also like to take a picture sometimes and then look at that because Ironically, uh, certain things stick out and you're able to fix what you perceive to be a mistake or add some cool addition to it. I'm just going to go a touch heavier with the black here. Just a slight triangle here, same here. Slight triangle there. pretty happy with that. I can mess with this later. The main thing here is that you have this bottom two inches that you're happy with it. Okay? Because once we put the palm fronds in here, it's not going to be very easy to fix this. You have to let the palm fronds dry, work on your ocean, and then bring them back again. If you guys want to add some white in here, you can. Um, but I particularly like the bright yellow because this is kind of sunsetty, spacey vibe, and the white tends to add a little too much brightness on the bottom. I want to have that that calm feeling that you get at sunset when the light's just easy on your eyes, you know? All right, it's not perfect, but not too bad. So I'm happy with what's happening here. I'm gonna peel the tape. 
very lightly and peel the tape. Don't be ripping it off. Just take it easy. Get this out of your way so you don't track paint anywhere. So, got the whole painting covered with paint, which is nice. It's a good feeling. It's a good time to chill. Uh, once again, step back from your painting. Take a look at it. Take a look at your mountains. Take a look at your sky. Maybe add a couple stars with the with the handle of your brush. Add a little yellow in your mountain. Touch up your sun a tad. Whatever, whatever is calling out to you. So this painting is not completely finished yet. I didn't finish the palm front because I was in a big hurry to get to the next student. Uh, but this is our goal here. We're gonna put the palm fronds in next on the bottom and then work the tree. But we want to dry this whole bottom part first. Hope you guys are having fun. <laughs> What's up, Brian? Elise, what's up, Brian Johnson? Sam's, what's up? Elise, Kristen, welcome. Thanks for painting with me. What's up, Daniel? How's it going? Ashley, Quinones, welcome. I'll be right back, guys. I tend to be a little messy. I gotta clean up some cups, and I'll be right back. Uh, Feel free to comment where you're from and let me know if you can hear me, if the music's too loud. We had some audio issues earlier, so just give me a shout. I'm super low tech. I literally have a ladder with two devices, blue taped, uh, like when I do time lapses for murals. All right, I'll be right back. Gonna get some fresh water. You guys take a break. Uh, bio break, drink break. Dry the bottom part. I'll be back doing that in a second. Be right back. Just so you guys know, our main color we're gonna be using next is black. Uh, it's a good time to clean up your area. Get a new napkin or flip it around. Just straighten up your area. Don't dip your brush in your beer or your coffee or your tea or whatever you're drinking. And kind of situate, get your body language going again. A lot of people have trouble with trees. So if you're having trouble doing this on our next step, I recommend you get rid of your easel and lay it flat on the table and do a drawing style. I use my pinky here like this. Or if your paint's dry, you can also do something like this and work that way. In the old days, they used to use like a leather pouch at the end of a stick and you could rest your hand on it. So as long as your paint's dry, you're good to go. I'll be right back, guys.
All right, so now I'm gonna dry the bottom here. Thanks for being patient. What's up, Crystal? Keisha, Erica, Kristen, Kristen, welcome. Hope you guys are painting. If not, check out the replay or I'll have it on YouTube. You can chill out at your own convenience. I'm also doing a Monday 420 birthday bash reggae planet thing. So join me on my birthday. It'd be really cool to have you. Similar colors as today. So if you already have these, you're good to go. I'll post a few new instructions on a couple more steps, but it'll be fun. I'm gonna dry this bottom part. Then I'm gonna be separating the two worlds. So I'm gonna use white here on the shoreline to separate these two worlds. If you prefer to be yellow or green or grassy or earth tones, you can do that as well. Um, but if you want yellow here, I suggest doing white first, then letting it dry, and then coming back with the yellow. So in order for this neon yellow to show up here, it'll fade off heavily. Do white first, and then overlap it with the yellow after it's dry. So I'm mainly paint drying this section here, so I'm not dragging paint when I'm doing comb from. I'm drawing the horizon here so I don't pick up paint while I'm working on it. For this part, you can use an angle brush, a little square brush, whatever you're feeling. I prefer to use a fan brush. Show you how to load it here. So, I'm going to start with white, heavily load the fan brush, so there's, it's not looking like a comb, so it, it, it's all together like a fan. I'm going to use one angle here, and just slowly drop, very lightly here, as it tapers out to the horizon, I'm just tapping it, pushing, and a little heavier as you work your way up here. If you want to put a little whitewash in over here, like this, it's going to give you the illusion of this wrapping around into a cove. I don't want to go too heavy on the white because I want it to feel like it's farther away. But it's a good start. Okay. It's important this little island here that I just ever so lightly separate it. And I'm just tapping and dragging the corner of that fan brush. Put a little cove in here. Whatever you're feeling. It's a stormy day. Go a little heavier with it. We get a little stronger on this side. Except for on the horizon, we want it to taper off. Then I'm gonna tap a little more aggressively in this area. Maybe make a little co. Imagine the, the water kind of tapering off. Over here, all the way to the horizon. Try to make them organic. Don't, you don't want them all to look the same. All right, so now we've separated it. Got a little cool balance happening here. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to use fresh black. I like this one here. 
liquid acrylic. It's a little bit softer than a, a hard body, but not as runny as like a folklore paint like this or an Americana like this. See, these are a little runny. Um, if I'm using these heavily, I add a little thickener, but this deco art neon purple is really cool. It's hard to find. Walmart, sometimes Michael. I'm gonna go a little black here. And we're just gonna get warmed up with the brush. I'm gonna use a larger one, a one inch. Loading the brush flat. I'm not gonna think about it. Right now, if you're working on an easel, you want to bring the tip or the edge of your canvas up in front of the lip of the rest. So if you need to put something behind it, that's cool. I happen to have a couple tubes of paint there. You just put it out just enough for me. So I'm not hitting that wood thing every time. I have this one taped so I don't knock it off the easel. But you could put a sharpie behind there, put a towel, but try to keep the edge just off the, the rest here. We're going to do a, an up motion. Loaded the brush here pretty heavily, but I kept the bristles straight. I'm going to go point down and up, up and lift out, up and lift out. And it's kind of, you could practice a few if you want to practice here like this before you go to your canvas I recommend it once you get the feel and the pressure then you can get a little more control I recommend dampening your brush but make sure it's not drippy make sure the black is flowing nicely you can bring a little water to the black as well I'm gonna go up upstroke different angle okay I'm gonna go fast. Sometimes fast is better because you don't have time to analyze yourself. That's why I love live art because I literally don't have time to overthink it. And sometimes the results are really nice. So as you see, I'm putting in these some of these fairly thin lines here, and it's just, whoop, I'm just kind of rocking my hand, and so the brush bends, and then leaves a thin line as I'm exiting the canvas. Now make sure you go in different directions here. Try to really get the brush working for you. If if you don't have control of the larger one going on with that half inch brush or even the quarter inch brush take your time on this until you get the brush doing what you want it to do you can do a couple straight up and down there we go. let me fix the music here I'll be right back stretch what's up Mick Greg how's it going bro how you doing man hope you're doing great really missing the festivals right now so gotta keep the faith getting there guys thanks for painting with me So as you can see, I just have the baseline here. Some foliage. <clears throat> 
So I'm gonna add a little bit of extra from the sample. I have some white here. I'm gonna come into the white and go to the black and create a little bit of gray. Occasionally hit the white like this. Do that same process, but go a little larger. And make sure you're loading your brush. A little bit of white. Just a little bit. It's gonna fade to gray, but it's gonna have a cool effect. Just follow along. A little bit of white on there. I'm gonna get rid of the white. I'm gonna go back to solid black and I'm gonna put it in another layer in front and go a little heavier with it. So I'm gonna make one branch like this. And I'm gonna follow the same branch and turn off. Follow the same branch, turn, 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 turn. So now I put those white highlighted palms behind that. It's going to give it some depth. Up, 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 up. So I put a little bigger front here. Say we want one coming in right here. Main branch. Follow that make first line and turn, turn, turn. I have to point up, working my way down, turn. Okay, same here, up, 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 okay. Let's see, we have a nice one right here. Turn it in like that, follow the branch, turn, turn, turn. The more work you do on these palm fronds and the more different angles you have, it'll look like the, the leaves on the back side are drooping down and creating another line. So go different angles. And don't be afraid to do some in this bright area right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'll get a little Another angle happening, see? It gives that branch some depth. Turn it down, drop it so it's like drooping. And I'm gonna add a few here. And even droop a couple of those down and around like they're coming from behind. both sets of leaves. I'm going to layer a little more black on here over the top. Don't take out all your white or your gray. But just layer it a little bit. And we got another one coming down like this. How's everybody doing? Alright, so now we're going to work on the palm tree. I'm going to use a larger brush. Um, but I recommend a half inch if you haven't done a tree before. I'm going to use this one. But all of these angle brushes serve the same purpose, just depending on your practice and how you work the brush. As you go down in size the bristles get a little stiffer so you have a little more control if you can't finesse the brush. All right keep going with the black here. Now Give you guys a quick sample here. For the palm tree, there's two methods. Light pressure here, thin line, as you work your way down, heavier pressure. Or, 
my angle brush, point up, working down. Or angle brush, point down, heavy pressure, work your way up, and then ease up. So whatever you, if you're feeling better, top to bottom, fine. If you're feeling better going up, more comfortable for your body language, then do that. So I'm just gonna pick where our tree is gonna be. Today we're just gonna do one tree. You guys wanna do three? Cool. Just don't block your sun. Try not to kill all your work here. Just keep in mind where you're putting your frond. If you have a favorite part of the sky, you know, put the frond out of the way so you're not covering it up. I'm gonna drop mine in right about here. And try not to make this too straight. Angle it slightly. Put a little hitch in it if you want. If you want a crooked tree, put a little crookedness in there. No tree is perfect. Work your way down. So, as you can see, I did lighter here, work my way down, a little heavier pressure. I'm gonna repeat the process. I reloaded the brush. And I'm going to apply a little more pressure as I go down and thicken it up. Thicker here, you want it thicker at the bottom, thinner at the top. Now, if this is stressing you out and you don't want to put a big black line through all the work you just did, just leave it alone. Strawberry's cool. Put a century plant here. Put a little tree in the front. Put a creepy tree in. If you guys like palm trees, do the palm tree with me. If you want a creepy tree, put in a creepy tree. If you want a pine tree, do a pine tree, but just don't block all your work out. But make it kind of a skimpy pine tree. So I'm gonna kind of set the base here for uh, the palm fronds. I switched to my half inch, loading it flat both sides. Pretty thin black paint. I'm just gonna start picking where I want my branches. Usually do about anywhere from seven to eleven fronds. Point to my left. I'm going down like this. You now. You can do this with a fan brush as well, but it does take some practice. <clears throat> if you can get your fan brush like this, broke it up like a comb, and add it to the black, like so, you can do this kind of thing. So you start a straight line, and then you do that kind of thing, but it's more wispy and soft. I'm all about kind of being in your face with the texture, so I'm gonna take the extra time and make this palm real thick. And the same thing we did here, I'm doing down, so I'm following the branch. I'm doing different angles. I just put one in there just to, for fun. Cut there. If your angle brush isn't working for you and you can't get a thin line, then switch to a tiny brush. And this will take a little longer, but make it happen. Alright, so keep in mind that a palm frond, the palm fronds are also coming at you. So it's cool to have one layered in front of the trunk going to give you a little bit more of a realistic feel than just having them coming off. There we go. I got two of the bottom part gone. 
the center part, you don't have to overthink this part, but just try to set your main branches up here. Like this. I have a few going to the right. One going up. A few going to the left. Well, I have a little trouble going right to left. Just the way my hand works. So if you need to lay it down or turn it upside down or just whatever you need to do to get it feeling right, I'm starting in the center, working my way up. Like this. I'm just setting up these fronds. Hey, honey. Hi. How you doing? Good. Just setting up the fronds. I'm just adding their little branches. And I'm doing that same angle thing, so the different angles that you have going, the more realistic it's gonna look. Very light touch. Kind of chunking it up in here. Okay? Do a big branch here. Like this. rules here. If you want to do a long palm frond you can, but the idea is to keep a little bit of color in between each section. And just take your time and work your way out so it feels right. set the base here everything you do you want to work from the center out center out and then start thinking about how chunky the tree is here in the center Don't kill your favorite stars over here. Just have fun with it. palm tree has some dead ones, you want to do one hanging with some fronds. If it's that tropical style of palm, you want to have a few uh, like date things hanging off. So I got the basic palm frond happening here. Go a little bit higher here like this. This is hard to see on camera, but it kind of just leaves off into the dark area, but because this part's thicker, it'll show up. And I'm gonna add some highlights here. So now, I'm gonna take the same angle brush, I'm gonna go into the neon yellow with the corner. It's pretty chunky. And I'm gonna add, just dab it here. Go back to black corner again, same thing. And just fade it out slightly. Just add a little highlight. This happens to be neon, so that part's gonna light up, but light yellow is fine. Okay. I'm gonna do another layer of this, but for now, 
I'm gonna just do a couple of the neon yellow. Just a couple little dashes on the black paint, still wet. And add some depth to the palm fronds. Keep in mind, it's kind of like fireworks. We're working our way out, working our way out. Dry it. I'm gonna get the trunk dry. And I'm gonna get our main palm trunk dry. So on today is obviously I went a little bigger with the frond up into the darker area. I can add greens and yellows up here to make it stand out. Like this. I'll show you guys a cool technique on the trunk. We want this dry right now so we can add some highlights. I'm getting some fresh yellow and a touch of white. And I'm using a fan brush. I'm getting it wet and then I'm leaving the bristles separated and very lightly hitting the paint so they're still separated. Now I'm gonna set the fan brush on the far left side of the front and pull. Set it. Pull. Set it right on the edge. Pull in. I'm doing a slight swoop. To give it a little roundness. And the reason I'm doing a majority of white right now is because I'm going to come back with yellow. And I don't want it to fade out. Setting it. Pull. Pull. Very light touch. Pull. Pull. If you don't have a fan brush, you can use your angle brush. Set the angle here and then pull in. A very light touch. If it gets chunky or you go too heavy on the paint, clean it again. Get the bristles separated. Hit it on your napkin. See how they're separated. Grab a little yellow. gets too chunky you can tap it like this separate them again See that? keep working our way up as you get up here we're gonna go a little smaller While that's drying, we're going to go back to the top and add ourselves some yellow. We want to get different directions happening. in the dark area. You want some light so this can stand out. Like so. Pretending you're 
coming from the center, working your way out. Make a little firework. If you're leaving too much yellow in the middle, don't worry, we'll just come back and add a little black. Add some highlights. Light. Maybe a little. Maybe a little neon green too. Why not? If you want to leave the palm tree just black and silhouetted, super cool too. Now it looks like I've overdone it, but that's cool because I'm gonna come back with black, working from the center again do that same process that we did down here creating depth crossing over our strokes to give it a little more life I'm going to bring that yellow back. Right here, just tapping. Even a little yellow chunk. Dry the trunk real quick. Add a little yellow up here. guys now we're gonna keep that fan brush broken up like a comb again like so fresh neon yellow or light yellow whatever you have and we can add a lot of stuff to this but I'm just gonna keep it simple going about two and a half hours so it's a good window to paint if you want to come back and mess with some stuff you can so same idea except I'm gonna overlap what we did with yellow and really bring out this tree here like this dabbing in yellow setting it on the edge of the trunk pulling in Pulling in. Flip it, pulling in. Overlapping the, the white, really brightening it up. 
Okay. Camera's a little far from the painting, but better go lighter than too dark and then having to bring back the black. So go easy on the first round. Take a step back, look at it. And then see if you want to add some more. If you go too heavy on this light color, take black and come back this way. Pretty heavy with the yellow here. As you can see, the yellow kind of faded out there. I'm going to add a little white. Work on that trunk a little. Overlap with yellow. So. A nice trunk. Nice trunk. <laughs> Now, you know, palm fronds, I mean, we're not trying to get realistic here. This is our own world, but palm fronds have vertical and horizontal breaks. So, I'm going to take the same fan brush, coming to black, loading both sides, like so. And I'm going to very lightly tap some lines across our shadow work. Darker on the right. Sun's over here and lights on this palm front on the left. I'm going to come along and darken up the right side of the whole trunk and also very lightly tap some vertical lines. Now this isn't something you see from 20-30 feet away but as you walk up to the painting it's a really cool effect. You want the painting to get better as you approach it. You don't want it to get worse. So, I love Impressionism, um, but I've kind of worked with it over the years and I'm not real happy with the looseness of it. So I try to make the paintings have both appeal as far as it's still Impressionist, it gives you that kind of Imagine your own world feel. However, as you approach it, you don't want it to get messy. So, I work on these little details. Just to give it that extra finished feel. So, heavy on the black on the right, and then very slightly just overlapping the vertical lines in the trunk. Add a little more yellow up here and we'll call it a day. I really appreciate you guys being here. It's been rough. Not being able to paint live. Not being able to interact with the kids and my students. So, this is totally out of my comfort zone and I struggle heavily to be on camera and be live. So I'm just kind of slowly getting used to it. And uh, I appreciate your encouragement. I appreciate you guys for being here. We all can help each other. Um, any donations I get, gratuities, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I generally take about a third of it and then immediately buy shirts, merch from bands I like, from other artists like this entrepreneur shirt here from Christopher Morphis. Um, it's got Kyle Smith shirt, got some great jewelry from Amber Crouch. I got some cool necklaces and stuff. Um, please buy local, support your local artists, musicians, business people. Small businesses right now are struggling. All the self-employed people, uh, 
hopefully the program will kick in, but for right now, we can't even get unemployment, so we're just kind of winging it, trying to put it all together, staying positive. Hanging in there. <laughs> hanging in there and uh, possibly switching to peanut butter sandwiches real quick, but hey, you know. We're all blessed. There's always somebody that has more than you, and always somebody that is in need and has way less than you. So just put it in perspective. Well, we can all help each other. I know it doesn't seem like much. Well, five bucks here, ten bucks there. Adds up. But uh, you know, like. Clinton Fear on live feeds and Synergy and Dubest and Kyle Smith the other night, you know, a couple thousand people throwing a couple bucks and boom, you know, they're not stressed out, they're not struggling, they can keep getting together and creating and uh, buy the materials they need keep inspiring and adjusting to this Change. weird live art, live music, couch, concert <laughs> situation that we're in. Couch concert. Woo, welcome <laughs> to the couch concert. I don't know. Art's not as exciting as music, but if you have the patience, it's a, a great way to, to beautify your house, beautify your life, give a present away. You know, it's all good. Looks like I dripped a little paint there, so gotta find some water here. Need water, babe? I don't know, I'm good. I just dripped a little spot right here. <laughs> there we go. I'd sign it, but. I suck at signing and I really don't like signing my name. It's, it took me a lot, a lot of years and thousands of paintings to get comfortable with signing it, but uh, because it's still tacky and a little wet here, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. I'm gonna paint the edges black, uh, just so you guys get an idea on how to do that. Show you real quick. For a finished look on the wall, I'd like to take these you can just put a tack, two tacks on the wall, same height, and it will never rock on you. One tack's fine with my needle adjusting here and there. I put a wire here, generally. Uh, but I like to paint the edges black. So, I do this method. I take an angle brush or a square brush, and go like this. And make sure you don't push down onto the painting. And I just work my way across. So, and I'll push the paint around here. And the crucial part's this edge here. Just, just take your time, work your way around. Paint two, three sides. If it's resting on your easel, wait, let it dry, come back and do this one at the end. Sign it wherever you feel, wherever it feels balanced. Use a small brush or a white paint pen. I usually use a white paint pen now because I have trouble doing my name in a tiny little brush. Thank you so much for being here. Episode two, Balderas is complete. Um, can't thank you enough. Looking forward to seeing your paintings. Post them on my wall, tag me, send them to me so I can see them even if you don't want to post them. Work on them tomorrow and send them to me. Um, if you guys want to drop a donation, a couple bucks is fine. I, you know, there's no offense here. If you want to share it, cool. It's not required. Totally not required. I just want to inspire you all to paint and uh, you know, block out reality for a minute. Go inside yourself and and express yourself. So we'll see you on Monday. 420 at 222 I'm doing a uh, reggae planet so hope to see you there same colors as today a little more involved two or three more steps 
we'll make it easy. I'll try to take my time and not rush it. So look forward to having you. Stay safe, everyone. Support each other. Don't argue. It's crazy times right now. We're all divided. We don't need to be more divided. So just uh, just think before you speak and and you know love everybody and support everybody. Check in on your friends and family. It's a really rough time. I've been going through so many emotions and I've been out for over a week and a half. So uh, it's really great to paint with you guys. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find the motivation, just the, it's not right, but to inspire you all and to have you paint with me is is an honor. It replaces that void of having that humor, human interaction, having the kids at the shows, you know, coming up with their eyes wide and asking me questions and tapping on me while I'm painting and, and parents, you know, um, you know, getting enthralled with what's happening and all the kids are there. Uh, you know, I miss being with my students. So even to do it virtually, it's really cool. So I'd really love to see your work and thank you so much. Um, stoked to see everything. Um, please tag me, drop it in the event page, message me, drop it on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you're feeling. You guys have a blessed evening. I know it's a little late in the East Coast, but love you all. Send love from the Shoal Camp. Prayers out to everybody. We'll talk to you soon. See you Monday, 222. Paint with me. Reggae plant.